Train is Creations. This is episode 194. We're only six away from 200. And if you are new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Please click that little red subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell-shaped icon next to it, that will notify you anytime I post a video, which is Saturdays and Wednesdays. And whenever I see something else going on that I want to share with everybody. Uh, if you are a return viewer, thank you so much for coming by each week and chatting and being part of our yarny, crafty group. So I have, this is a packed podcast. It's, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's going to be too long, but there's lots of stuff in this podcast today. First thing, if you follow me on Instagram, which is Katrina's underscore creations, uh, or if you follow me over on the Facebook page, which is Katrina Knits, you will see that I finished the C2C. I really did not expect to get this done for another two weeks. But to be honest, it's addictive. And I got started and I was like, oh, I'll just do a little bit more. Oh, I'll just do a little bit more. Before I knew it, I was done. So let me hold it up. It measures 44 by 44, so it's a lap gan, which is perfect for the living room, and it is staying in the living room. It is not going to go upstairs to my husband's study because it matches my sofa so good, and I have like a nautical theme. These colors are perfect. It's staying downstairs where it'll get more use. So I started on a white section, and then we go to the blues all the way to a navy. and then back down the other side. So I love it. I, I like the C2C. Um, not Definitely not as hard as I thought it would be. So there it is. And it's going to live in my living room. Um, if you wanted to have a tutorial, most of you who are crocheters know how to do the C2C. Some of us are a little slow to the program and that would be me. Uh, but I did a tutorial for part one for the increases on last Wednesday and this Wednesday will be a tutorial on doing the decreases because you start at a point, you go out to a widest point and then you go back in again. Um, one of you, Beverly, happened to mention that C2Cs are also great to do dishcloths with and I was like ding 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 that would be perfect because I've got some cotton I need to use up and my dish my dish cloths are looking pretty dingy. So um, anyway, that's finished project number one. Then I have two more hats done. These hats, and I've got string all over them. In case you've noticed, I am not filming up in the craft cave. Dave is not home, which means the house is pretty quiet and I didn't want to carry everything upstairs to carry it back down again. So I'm sitting in my kitchen and the camera is very high tech. It's perched on top of my sewing machine. Um, yeah, oh well, anyway. This is the globular hat. This is by Inca Kling. It's a free pattern and I have two of them. And these are on the smaller side, these particular two that I made because of my 11 grandchildren, we do have a few that are still really little. We have a three-year-old who will be four at Christmas. Well, he'll be, he'll be a week away from being four. So that should fit him perfectly. And then we have one that will be four going on five. So that one will be for him. So we do have a couple of, we have a group of littles and then we have a group of middle-aged, well, not middle-aged, middle kid aged, and then we have teens. So um, yes, yeah, so these are hat number five and number six which means I only have three hats to go to finish the boys. And so what I've decided to do is I started with a pattern I designed called the Pinwheel Beanie. And if you want it, it's a free knitted pattern and the link is down below in the patterns. You'll see it over there, but it's a free download called the Pinwheel Beanie. And I made three of those and now I've made three of the globular hats. You can see the stitching a little bit better with the lighter color. And now my last three for the boys are going to be the ones I thought I was going to do for the girls. So let me explain what I'm doing with that. I am making the mock 
Cable Hat by Barbara Benson. Again, it's a free pattern, and originally I was going to do this for the girls, but I'm doing it for, I'm making three of them for the boys. And here's what it looks like. These are not real cable stitches, but they're made to look like it. And they're kind of fun to do. They're kind of a, a cross stitch. Cross, yeah, you, you lift some stitches over top of the others, almost like a, like a Passover stitch. Um, and then you knit across, so it forms an X. So they are fake, fake cables. And so this is hat number seven. And then I started hat number eight. Now you may be wondering, why do I have two going at one time? Um, I'm doing the ribbing with a US six, and then I'm changing to a US seven. So these are currently on a US size seven. And because the six was free, I switched over and started doing this one. And the reason would be, this is what's left of this skein, and this is already really dark, so I've got one more skein of the blue left, so I'm actually going to pull from the center here to get a little bit lighter color into this. Um, so, yes, there's, there's one, and this one is almost all gray, so I will pull, I have one more skein of the, this is called licorice, and the yarn I'm using for this is Lion Brand Just My Stripe. This is licorice, and this one is, I think it's denim. I think that's what it was called. No, wild blueberry. I guess so, but it's it's got denim colors in it. So anyway, I'm going to be using some of the darker colors from this one to mix in, because as you can see, otherwise this hat is going to be totally light gray. So um, yeah, I'm going to be doing a little splicing back and forth so I can get just a little bit more color into the hats, because this one... This one has very little color, and I wish I would have made it a little bit more like this. So it had, you know, just a little brightness to it, but I'm not ripping it out. So anyway, that is what I am working on as far as hats go. Now, I've got two hats to make for the girls. Initially, I was going to knit all of them. In fact, I was going to do the mock cable hat for the girls. I'm finding it only takes about a half a skein to do a hat, maybe even less depending on the size and how many yards. There's 177 yards in this. So I'm actually only needing like 80 or 90, just shy of 90 yards to do a hat, which tells me I've got plenty to do a hat in crochet because be, crocheting takes a third more yarn than knitting does um, just because it twists around a little bit more it's more textured than knitting is knitting is more flat this is for my nine-year-old granddaughter and this one is for my 17 year old granddaughter because teal is her favorite and all nine-year-old little girls like pink and purple it's just pretty much prerequisite pink and purple so I am going to crochet their hats because I can get away with a little bit lacier looking hats with girls. Um, the hat I'm thinking of doing, and if you guys can help me out with this, I am looking at doing the divine hat that I saw a lot of you make in the show and tell a while back. I don't know who it's by. So, um, or if you have another hat to recommend, please let me know down in the comments. I'm looking for a free pattern because I'm not a big hat wearer. So if I get a pattern, I don't want to buy it because I'm only going to make two of them. Um, so I'm looking for a free pattern that would look nice for little girls. So, well, and a not so little, little girl. She's 17. So anyway, if you got some ideas or suggestions, please leave them down in the comments so I can check them out because you guys always give me good recommends. The two hats that I'm making were recommended by a viewer. The globular hat and the uh, mock mock cable hat were both recommended by a viewer. So you guys, good judgment. Please let me know. So my other project, and I know you guys are just waiting for me to mess up on her name because I routinely mess up on her name. Here we go. Lena Spagerson. And this is the camisole or chamisole tea 
This is a pattern from Annie's, and she is the signature designer. She designs crochet and knitted patterns. I haven't tried any of her crochet patterns. This is the first knitted pattern that I've done of hers, and it is a bottom-up sweater. It's a tee, actually, so this is being knit out of a cotton blend. And here's where I was last week. You can see right here. So I have gone all the way up to here. I think if I remember rightly, I have to have about 16 inches before I go under the arms. It's 16 or 17 inches. And I am right about, I think, 9, about 9, maybe 10. I have to measure it. Um, so I'm getting there. But uh, it's really soft. I like it. I love the way the two yarns are pooling together well. So, um, yes. That is my other work in progress. If you're wondering what I am wearing right now, um, I don't know if you, can, if you can see it. Yeah, all of this is beaded. This is actually a free pattern. It is the Tin Can Knits Flax Light Sweater that I modified. Um, the Flax Light is actually a long-sleeved sweater. I made this, of course, short-sleeved, and I put the beads on it. I love this sweater. I have three sweaters made out of this yarn. This is a combination of a bamboo and a cotton. It is so incredibly soft and comfortable. I have one, of course, in the orange. I have one that's in gray and black and like a, a light gray. So it's like a gray charcoal and a black. And I have another one that is teal colored. I love these things. They're just so soft and comfortable. I throw them right into the wash and the dryer. Don't, there's no special care with them or anything. They haven't shrunk. You know, I just, I love them. And so anyway, that's what I am wearing in case you were curious. Now it's time to see what you all have been making this week.
Now, I'm going to do a separate video section here coming up in just a minute, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about it first. Uh, as you know, we have two of our viewers who have been participating in the Tour de Fleece. Now, the Tour de Fleece runs at the same time as the Tour de France, you know, the bicycle race. And the whole idea, it is spinning yarn, and you try to see how much you can spin during the same period of time that the Tour de France runs. And then you measure how, how much yardage, how, what the weight of yarn is that you've, you've spun. Uh, there's different like little awards you get for spinning something that's new to you or trying a new spinning technique, all that type of thing. Well, this year's Tour de France got postponed because of the COVID. And as a result, they're doing it possibly in August. But the Tour de Fleece went on, so there might possibly be a second Tour de Fleece that will run if the other one ends up running in August. However, we had Yoka and Fran participating in the, the tour that ran during July. And so rather than put them in with the show and tell, I thought I would show highlights of both of them as well as the totals of how much they have actually spun and the weight of the yarn that they have spun. Um, and these are by no means all of the pictures that they have. Uh, Yoka has her own blog, which I will put a link down below if you want to go over and check it out because there's a lot more detail over there. Um, you can see more of the spinning techniques and more about what it is she's spinning. I'm just showing a variation of a bunch of the pictures. And the same with Fran. Fran has a Facebook um, page and she actually has an album with all of the pictures and the type of yarn it is and how much she spun of each type um, and the ounce, you know, the weight and the length of each of them as well. So if you want more details, I will put a link to her down below too so you guys can go over and check them out because it's a lot more information than what I can share in a short period of time. So I just wanted you all to see ahead of time what you're going to be watching. And this is just a compilation of some of the pictures, but like I said, by no means all of the pictures of what they all made.
So special congratulations to Fran and Yoka for participating in that and the immense amount of yarn that they got spun during that time period. So now we are going to do a giveaway. Now I mentioned this at the beginning of our Christmas in July fairies giveaway that I was going to be doing a second giveaway on July 25th as a consolation prize. Just, um, you know, you're not one of the semi-finalists if you're chosen or anything. It's just an extra giveaway just for participating. So I used random comment generator and I used the entry video, which was the initial video you all signed up for the Christmas in July fairies. And the winner is Lee Ann Starnes. So Lee Ann, if you would contact me at Katrina's creations at yahoo.com, let me know your, your address. I will get your prize out to you right away. And the prize Leanne is going to win is this. It's another skein of my hand dyed yarn. This is hand dyed with, I believe it was Kool-Aid. So there it is. It's pink and a cream and a purple. And it all has little shades of gray here and there in it. So there it is. And this is like a real light blush pink here. So congratulations, Leanne. And for the rest of you, make sure you tune in over to Dana's Wonderlust Crochet because she will be picking the grand finalist. So um, that way we can, we can congratulate the grand final winner. And I will let you all know next week what I ended up sending because I haven't really decided yet. I have an idea. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about an idea. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. So I will put a picture in uh, next week and let you know what it was I sent to the grand final. But uh, congratulations, Leanne. And like I said, get in touch with me and I will get that in the mail to you as soon as possible. Now in acquisitions this week, and yes, I do have acquisitions. I was... I was really excited about this. Okay, my crochet hooks that I have, and I have the ones that are like rubber on the end. I love them, but they only go up to a size six. I needed some bigger ones. So I went online and I went to eBay. Look at all the crochet hooks that I got. Some of these are repeats of sizes I already have. But there are some big ones. These go all the way up to 9 millimeter or 10 millimeter. There's a 10 millimeter in here somewhere. Here it is. They go all the way up to 10 millimeter. These are bamboo. And there is, I think there's 12. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. Yeah, they go all the way to 12. The smallest one is a three millimeter and they go all the way up to a 10 millimeter. So like I said, some of these are repeats, but some of them are not. Some of these are the bigger sizes and that's what I needed was basically the sevens through 10. Here's why I got the whole bunch. $2.55 for the entire thing. Yes, so uh, yeah. Anyway, that's what I got from eBay. Um, I will try to find the buyer. Oops, just dropped one. Um, I will try to find the link to the seller that I bought these from, and I'll stick it down below if you're interested in. I'm not an affiliate with them or anything. I, I just like passing on good deals. So anyway, yeah, and they're really smooth, even though they're, they're wood, because I was a little leery with wood sometimes. You know, it can be a little snaggy. But these seem to be really smooth, and they have like a built-in flat section a little bit on this side, but mostly on this side for, for holding. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with these. And for $2.55, I figured I couldn't go too far wrong. So, yes, I now have up to a size 10. I don't know when I'm going to. Well, I have a possibility when I'm going to use it. I'll show you what one of my future projects is that I have in mind. So, um, anyway, that's my acquisitions. Now the future progress, why I kind of needed a bigger needle, is after I finish all the hats, my next crochet project is going to be this. I have 10 skeins of this. I bought this 
oh, a while back, Lion Brand had 10 skeins for, I think it was $20 or 10, no, it was $10. So it's basically a dollar skein. It was a huge sale and lots of us jumped on this one. So I have 10 skeins of this and it's really pretty. It's kind of getting blown out a little bit, but it's it's like rosy colored post pastel. It's kind of a pinky rose. And it's funny because I already have a cabled sweater that I made almost out of this exact color. But this also has like a real light pistachio green in it too. So it's just really feminine. It has a kind of a creamy tan color. Let me see if it has a name for this. I thought it did. Yes, Sunday Stripes. This is called Sunday Stripes. It is... 185 yards or 169 meters. It is 98% acrylic and 2% other fiber. The other fiber I'm pretty sure is, if you look at this yarn, you'll see it kind of twists around a center, like a central string. That central string is the 2% other fiber, I'm pretty sure. So it's probably a cotton or an acrylic, something like that. But this is considered a number five bulky. And they are recommending a 6.5 millimeter hook or a size K. Um, and Knitting Needles, they're recommending a six millimeter or a US or a 10, US 10. So yes, yeah, so this is set, this is considered a bulky. Now I have not decided yet if I'm going to make this into a cardigan or a pullover. Not sure which. Again, if you have any pattern recommends for a large lady, please leave that down in the description box. I would really appreciate it because I'm not as familiar with crochet patterns, so I'm looking for something relatively simple that I can do with a bulky yarn. So it, this is very soft. I actually had a sweater that was made out of like an autumn color out of this yarn. I loved it. I literally wore it until it fell apart. I had to get rid of it about a year ago and I lived in that sweater. It was so comfortable. It was knit, but it just washed so easy. You just threw it in the wash, threw it in the dryer. You didn't have to block it. You didn't have to do anything fancy with it. I think I had it for about 10 years and it literally, the yarn actually wore through in spots. I had holes in it. And at first I thought maybe I could rip it apart and just re-knit it again and try to reuse the yarn. But I started trying to do that and the yarn was just so far gone because it had been worn so much. So I figured there was probably weak spots throughout the yarn. So the whole thing got torn out or got thrown out. So anyway, this is a future project. So I'm looking for ideas. Like I said, please leave them down in the comment box. I need all the help I can get. Can you tell this? So now it's time for our... Now Come and Get It is a little slim this week, mainly because I'm finding so many of these stores are doing flash sales. Um, and they're just right now not doing as many sales because they don't have as many people in to staff the sales, to stock the things. and. Um, but I'll tell you what we got. So the Dollar Tree still has their premier, and last week I kept calling it premium. It's premier just yarn in the worsted weight. Uh, they have it in quite a few colors. You do need to buy six skeins, but they're only a dollar a skein. Uh, they also have premier just cotton. You also need to buy six. And then they have a little bit left of the premier home, which is also a cotton. Um, I think it's maybe a smaller skein, but anyway, it's Premier Home, and that one you only have to buy three skeins of, except for the carrot color. The carrot color, they make you buy the entire case, which is 36 skeins of yarn. Who needs 36 skeins of orange yarn? Maybe the Great Pumpkin. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, apparently if you're going to do something in carrot or pumpkin color, you have to buy 36 skeins. I don't know. I don't get that one. But anyway, that's what they've got over at the Dollar Tree. And you can avoid shipping fees by just having it sent to, when you order online, just have it sent to your local Dollar Tree and pick it up there. 
So over at Leisure Arts, um, I thought I'm on a Christmas kick here since I'm making all these hats. And we just finished up Christmas in July fairies. And then there was, Annie's was running their Christmas in July for 10 days. Um, anyway, Leisure Arts, I looked at their Christmas things. And in the crochet section, they have a book called Big Book of Thread Ornaments. It is a download for $9.99, and there are over 100 designs in it. So I thought that one looked interesting. And then in their knit section, they have Christmas Stocking Trio. It is a download for $5.99. In Create for Less, they are still offering their It's a Wrap yarn for $8.59. They have another one that is like $11.99, which has more yardage, um, but it shows them being the same weight. I'm not quite sure about that. Anyway, they do have It's a Wrap for $8.59. And then Annie's. I checked over in their clearance section because Annie's does sell yarn. They also sell some nice patterns. Like I said, I got this one from Annie's. Um, so they do sell a lot of crochet and knitting patterns, but they also sell yarn. So of course I went to the clearance section when my kids were little and we would go shopping. And there was one time my son and my husband got separated from me in this store. And my husband's looking all over the place for me. And my son goes, Dad, look in the clearance section. It attracts mom like a bug do a light. That's where I was. I was in the clearance section because I like deals. Anyway, back over to Annie's. They have their, I'm probably going to totally butcher this name, but Sheep's G's, Sheep G's, Sheep G's. Yeah, I always thought it was pronounced Sheepies, but it's, it, it does have a J in it. So it's Sheep G's Alpaca for $4.99. Now, they, I think they only have like two colors to choose from. It looked like there was white and kind of a celery color, but alpaca, that's a really good price for alpaca, is $4.99. Uh, so anyway, I love knitting and crocheting with alpaca. Have I ever crocheted? I've never crocheted with alpaca. I've knitted with alpaca. I have spun alpaca. Um, it's extremely soft and lightweight, and it's very lovely to work with. So anyway, if you would like to try some, there's some over there for $4.99. Now, Knit Crate is no longer offering their $5 for your first trial box uh, of their yarn, they, but they are still offering 50% off. So if you would like to try your first box of Knit Crate yarn for 50% off, which would be, I think it's $12.50. I think it comes out to around $12.50 because uh, the full-size box is $24.99. So I think it's $12.50 to try out your first month's box. You can do so. The coupon, the link is down below, and the link to all of the sales are down below in the description box. You just click the little show more, it opens up and drops down, and you can find what you're looking for, and it should take you pretty much right over to there, except for the Knit Crate. The Knit Crate, you do need to cut and paste the link to uh, get to it. Um, the link itself doesn't work just by clicking on it for some reason. So uh, that uh, that is the sales and the end of our episode for this week. And like I said, please give me some pattern ideas down below. And Wednesday's video will be the second half of the C2C, which is going to be the decreases. And I will see you all later unless I run across some sales uh, in the meantime, which I will put up on YouTube, and I tend to post them over on Facebook as well. So that's it for this week. Thank you all for stopping by, and I'll see you later. Bye, everybody.